Did you know Apex Legend had a series of six inch scale action figures? I didn't. I found one of these. Let's open it up, see what it's about, and how does this compare to some of the other six inch scale action figures that I collect? Looking at the box here, we have Caustic from Apex Legends, and I'm guessing this is a different skin on the character. This is not the one that I remember from the game, and if I'm reading the back correctly, it says this is his uh, geometric anomaly look. What's interesting here is I can already start to see things like double jointed elbows, and we have a decent accessory kit. Apex Legends is a game that I tried probably when it released, gosh, however many years ago. I never really got into it myself, but I appreciated some of the styles. I appreciated what they were trying to go for with the whole game. And uh, this also seems something that could fit within my G.I. Joe classified shelf. It's kind of a tuck in. It's something maybe in the background because there are a lot of just over the top elements that are hallmarks of a G.I. Joe figure. <laughs> Again, this is one of my bargain finds. I got this at, what was it, Ross? Ended up being like four or five dollars, something like that. Yeah, I think from here we just open them up and uh, see what it's about. Looks like there's some instructions at the bottom of this thing. It probably tells me how to put on his backpack. So let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, I totally would have never figured this out. So I'm glad that they have this diagram to hook up the hoses on this thing. But it also makes me curious like what's happening back there. So let's get him out of the bubble so that we can see exactly what that uh, diagram is telling us. Oh yeah, that's pretty wild. So if you look on the back here, you can see there's all kinds of peg systems that slot in the backpack, but then you also have the hoses. I would have been totally wondering what to do with that. That's the next piece, right? We got to get him all together so that he is his video game version of himself. Let's take a look at the main backpack here. It is just a hunk of, I guess, like mauve maroon plastic. Matches pretty well with the rest of him. There are some color differences. Like if you look at his boot color and then you look at his backpack, it's different. The, the closest color match that I can find are on his canisters on the side so that's that's kind of an interesting thing there's only one way it's keyed in a way that there's like a little bite taken out of and it should just fit so nicely and we hook up hose number one is this gonna cooperate cooperates okay we gotta hook up hose number two doesn't seem like there's like enough give in the hoses for the backpack Kind of, I'm kind of worried that these are just going to pop out regardless of what I do. Guessing they are. And then hose number three is in the back. That is the tightest fit of all. <laughs> That's not working out so great. Like, th th this is kind of the best I can do. It just kind of flaps to the side there. I, I can just suggest that the hose goes in there. Not my favorite. Okay. He needs this piece right here. This is going to be the last element. That doesn't really go either. Huh. When you slot this in, you kind of got to tuck the hose underneath it so that it kind of buttresses it up. Uh, where does this plug in now? I gotta consult the diagram. So this has to wrap around his back and then tuck in. What the heck? This is a very... So I was doing it somewhat right, I guess. Oh, now all the other hoses came undone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not, not a fan of this hose system in the back for something so small. And again, if you're displaying the figure, you're often probably not showing him from the rear view here. It, it's it's very, very strange why all that effort goes into that. I mean, I'm guessing it probably has to do with how accurate he is to the character, which is a nice touch, but the fact that it's so unuser friendly just means that it's very difficult. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. The backpacks are slotted in. We will just suggest that all of these hoses are there. Uh, let's let's continue. If we take a look at the hands, they are just kind of like a C grip there. It, it's not a true trigger finger, like we see some other lines and stuff like that, but he does hold the weapon rather well. The weapon is extremely flexible. This is something I'm very used to in the world of G.I. Joe Classified series. The, the trigger finger, it looks like it could reach, but getting it there is just like very tough work. Yeah, okay, there we go. That took a lot of convincing, but he is holding the trigger on the weapon. I guess we'll just have to like bend it back. Uh, I, what I th One of the things about the weapon that I really like is that there's a lot of paint detail on there. Not only is there this like uh, gray, there's a there's just a tiny little bit of orange as accents, which is very nicely done, very well done. In fact, this overall figure has a lot of texture, has a lot of color, has a lot of patterns. 
Like, this was probably a very complicated figure to create in a way that had so much going on for it. Now that the weapon is situated, like, it, it seems fine. And as I'm moving around and playing with the joints, they are moving rather well. Some of them are tight in terms of, like, the up and down on the shoulders. But other... Oh, yeah, the legs are pretty tight, too. The arms do move rather well. Again, if you want to look on the shoulder here, there's like this really interesting gold detail. It's kind of like this V pattern. Very delicate, and it comes across really well. I don't see any sort of blemishes or imperfections there. I would worry about it rubbing off over time, but like for now, this looks great. The double jointed elbows, they are pinned, which, you know, it's fine. But uh, what I don't like is like this Pac-Man cutout right there. It doesn't have like a very elegant swoop to it like we see with some other action figure lines. These canisters on the side do articulate. They can go forward and back. I don't think the ankle goes up and down, but there is toe articulation. There's just the tiniest little bit of toe articulation and it's so cute. And now we got some of the leg movement here. Let's get that leg back. That's a really good range of motion with that leg. And there's like a big Pac-Man cut out of it. And you can see some of the ratcheting systems that they use to make everything stay in place. I'm taking a look at the face sculpt here, and it looks like they fixed his mask over a, a traditional face sculpt. So that was kind of glued to his face. And then the rebreather, or the, uh, the, the face mask that he does have, the gas mask, is like another really well done paint application scenario. Like... The paint application on this figure so far, like absolutely no complaints. It just comes to some of the finer details, like the very confusing maze on the backpack situation, which didn't necessarily need to be there, I don't think. Like probably for character accuracy, but ultimately that's that's not the, the way that you'd be displaying this character. So yeah, to recap so far, some of the things that I love, paint details, the details overall on this figure. There are so many great, interesting details. Uh, some of the things that I would have changed is this whole tube structure on the back because that also feeds into the thing that I really don't like about it is that like it's way overly complicated for such a small part of the action figure. Let's get a closer look, see how it stacks up against some of the G.I. Joe classified stuff because again, it looks very G.I. Joe like an over the top character pseudo military and even just like the coloring kind of reminds me of some of the later 90s G.I. Joe stuff. So I'm kind of pull some Cobras some Joes. We'll put him next to Caustic here and, and see how that looks. So I was holding Caustic up, and you can see that depending on the type of character that he's matched with G.I. Joe style, it can go really well. So here we have one of the Techno Vipers. Here's Caustic. These two look like buddies. Like, they, they could be in the same comic. They could be in the same movie. This guy could command, like, an army of Techno Vipers or something like that. It makes sense. But when we stand up next to some of the more... I would say classic military commando style Joes. Does it match? Yeah, I, you can make the case. It's like putting a G.I. Joe from the late 80s next to a G.I. Joe from the, I don't know, mid 90s. There's going to be some similarities, but there's going to be a stark contrast in terms of gear, kit, uh, colors, and just uh, over the top ability. Is, is that a thing? Because I think it's a thing when we're talking about this. So what do I think about caustic overall? You saw I was struggling with some of the parts of this figure, but there were some really great highlights as well. The paint applications, the details, stuff like that. Even though it didn't come all together cohesively, there are still some great elements of it. I thought this was going to be a very short review of a bargain bin figure that I found, but I ended up appreciating some of the details, like the fine paint applications. I think this figure in particular is a case where I think this is a product of a company leaning into the strengths that they have when it comes to bringing six inch scale stuff to life and doing their best to mitigate or, you know, try their best with some of the areas where it doesn't feel as confident as a figure. When we're working with action figures, aesthetics and paint and stuff like that is part of the equation, most definitely, but there's also a part where it's construction, it's movability, it's flexibility, it's a lot of the other details that go into the craft of making an action figure, not necessarily the art. And so I think they try to strike a balance of sorts, of maximizing their strengths while trying to hide or minimize some of the areas that just weren't working out. I mean, ultimately, I'm pretty surprised just how well Caustic is able to fit in with some of the current G.I. Joe classified series. 
I wasn't expecting it to be such a good match for some of the goofier or more vibrant characters in the Cobra line. And I don't even necessarily know if Caustic's a good guy or a bad guy in Apex Legends, so please let me know in the comment section if you know. When it comes to more military guys, like we put them up next to Flint there, you can see there's like a very drastic difference between the two. But yeah, that's everything I know about Caustic the Apex Legends action figure from Jax Pacific. And if you like finding action figures in bargain bins to try new lines, you should definitely follow along because I'm gonna be posting more videos like this. And if you like action figures of this six inch scale, G.I. Joe, Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series, the list goes on and on. Be sure to follow along and oh yeah, I'm like a Nerf guy too. I like Nerf blasters. Anything action toy, you gotta stay tuned to the Ri-Fi channel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.